What's going on? How's it going? Today we're going to do a quick tutorial, hopefully quick, about how to set up the GH5 or GH5S custom profiles. Panasonic did a really great job with the GH5 and the GH5S making very video centric uh, menu items and kind of cutting out a lot of the photo stuff that you don't need when you're in the movie uh, mode dial. But even so, it can be a little complicated or multi-step in order to get into the menus to make some important changes. So one way to get around that is by setting up custom profiles. The kinds of settings that are most advantageous to set to custom profiles would be resolution, frame rate, and maybe aspect ratio as well. And the other good thing is that it's really quick and easy to set up a custom profile, so you can, you can make changes to them frequently. So don't feel like once you set them uh, a certain way that you have to leave it that way. Um, I would encourage you to make changes to them frequently. It's easy once you have, once you kind of get it into your muscle memory or once you get into your thought process that you can utilize these custom profiles. If you go to a, a location and start filming, if you make changes to aperture, uh, shutter speed or shutter angle um, in your white balance, if you make those changes and they're not the same as you save to your custom profile, if you switch off that profile or if you turn the camera off, all of those little changes and adjustments won't save. But if you know you're gonna be there at the same spot for a little bit, go ahead and save those to your custom profile so that when you switch the camera off and turn it back on, it's gonna remember what um, ISO you were at. It's gonna remember your white balance. It's gonna remember your aperture, etc., etc. All right, so first things first, uh, make sure you are in the movie mode on your mode dial. That's the one with the little cinema camera on it. So that's gonna get rid of a lot of the extraneous photo features in the menu that you don't need, hopefully. What we're gonna do is go to the menu and then start from the top, um, but we're gonna make all the changes that we want. And I like to keep the change, like a lot of the, the way I set up the camera is gonna be consistent across all of the different profiles. What's mostly gonna change in terms of the custom profiles is just gonna be the uh, resolution frame rate and potentially the aspect ratio as well. I mean, I'm not really gonna go through all the settings that I like to set up because it could change for you and this isn't really like, that's not the po point of this tutorial. But anyway, getting to the most important thing, um, we'll do our record format. I like to do MOV for everything. So um, you obviously there's multiple uh, options with this camera, but I like to be an MOV. It's the, it'll give you the most options in terms of bit rate and the best audio recording options. So. MOV for me. So next is going to be the record quality. So for custom profile number one, I'm just going to pick the Cinema 4K. So 4096 by 2160 at 23.98 and we'll do a uh, 10 bit all eye. So that's gonna be the biggest one. So that'll be my uh, custom profile number one. You're gonna go down. So once you have everything set the way you like it, you can go through the menus and set up your camera how you want. Once you have everything set up, you're gonna go down to the wrench icon. On the first page, you can see the second option here is called custom set memory. So click on that and then you've got all the options for the mode dial. So we're gonna set that to C1 and I ask you to overwrite whatever was already on there. We'll hit yes and complete it. So if we go out to the camera and we switch our mode dial from the movie mode to C1, you can see that we are on Cinema 4K 24P dot uh, MOV. So all those settings we made are gonna be saved. So every time we go to custom one, it's gonna be that. So just to show you real quick, all of these settings here are also gonna be saved. So whatever you had your ISO set to, whatever your shutter speed is set to, whatever your aperture is set to, when you save it, and your white balance as well, when you save that custom profile, those settings are gonna save as well. If you make a change to that, so for whatever reason, say we go down to 171 <laughs> and then we change our ISO to 400 and then say we swap over to the movie mode so now we're back on the movie mode and you can see those settings changed and if we swap back to C1 those settings did not the what the settings we just changed did not rem it's not saved in the camera so let's go and set up another custom profile so go back to the menu and you can stay in c1 if you have like all the settings that you made in c1 are going to be consistent across the camera aside from your frame rate and resolution you can you can go and work right from c1 or you can go back to the movie mode and work from there so it's up to you it doesn't really matter so we'll go back to the menu uh, go up to our record quality 
and say we'll do C2, we're gonna make it UHD 4K 60p. So we'll save that. We'll make one more change here, just for shits and grins. We'll go to HDMI record output, and make sure that that's set to 422 10-bit. So if we wanna record uh, to an external recorder, at 422 10-bit and 60 frames per second, we can do that. So we'll make sure that's set there. And then we'll go down to our wrench icon, custom set memory, save that to C2. Yes, completed, boom. Now we'll rotate over to C2. And you can see there we've got 4K 60. And we go to C1 and we're back to Cinema 4K 24. All right, let's do another one. We'll go to record quality and this time we'll do um, 1080, 1080, 23.98 and make sure we've got VFR available so this will be our highest frame rate option and since we can't do 422 10-bit to this one we'll just go ahead and make sure our HDMI record out is set back to 8-bit and then custom set, set that to C3-1, overwrite, yes, completed. Now we are going to go to C3-1 so it's the C3-1, 8-bit, uh, full HD, 24p. So we are set, good to go there. And I'll mention here in your Q menu, your quick menu, make sure that you have VFR somewhere on your quick menu bar. It'll make it a lot easier to um, change your frame rate for this custom profile. So you can quickly go from, now we're in <laughs> two frames per second, uh, 12,000 percent, or excuse me, 1200 percent. But if we go to, uh, say we go to C2, so now we're in 60p 4K, and then we go back to C3, it didn't save it at two frames. It only say, it goes back to 24 frames per second. So if you're on a job or something, and you want to be in uh, your variable frame rate mode, but say you know you're going to be shooting at, I don't know, 96 all day long, you can set it to 96, go back into your custom set memory, save that to C3-1, and then when you go to like C3 C3 or uh, C1 or C2, so now we're in C1, Cinema 4K 24P, if we go back to C3-1, instead of reverting back to 24P, you can see it remembers that we're in 96 frames per second. So like I said, you're going to have to, any changes you make, if you don't save them, they're gonna revert back to the exact way that you set up the custom profile. So we'll make one more and let's go to menu. Uh, let's change, what else can we change here? Let's do like, we'll do a long GOP 4K instead of a for an all i 4K, just for whatever. Cinema 4K 2398, uh, 150 megabit per second. Save that one to custom set, or custom profile C3-2. So in order to get to C3-2, you actually have to click on the screen up here and then go to C3-2 and you can see it shows we are uh, Cinema 4K 24P. Simple as that. So that's really it for this. Uh, it's just a really quick and easy, kind of just get you familiar with how to set up the custom profiles and I would really encourage you to do it and get comfortable with it and making changes to it and making frequent changes and frequent saves to it. It's a great way to f maximize the flexibility of the camera and maximize like, you know, just making sure that you're getting all the use out of it you can because there's so many great features in here from, you know, 4K 60 and then high frame rates in 1080p. Sometimes it can get a little complicated to go in and make changes in the menus, but if you get all that stuff set up and you can swap, or swap around to them just by flipping the dial, you know, why not do that? So. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else about the camera that you'd like to know. If there wasn't anything here that was, or if there was anything here that was unclear, let me know that as well. And hopefully I can clarify some things for you. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time. I'm so monotone.